Life is a big school. We all have to learn. Apollo was one of the most famous and powerful gods on Mount Olympus. He was the god of many things, including music, poetry, archery, medicine, and prophecy. He was widely regarded as one of the most intelligent and talented gods, and his skill in these various domains made him an object of admiration and respect among the other gods and mortals. However, despite his many accomplishments, Apollo was also known for his pride. He often saw himself as superior to other gods and mortals, and his arrogance was a source of tension in many of his relationships. Some viewed him as an aloof and detached figure, more concerned with his own glory than the well-being of others. Despite this reputation, many still looked up to Apollo as a powerful and inspiring figure. His music was said to be capable of healing even the deepest wounds, and his poetry was a source of inspiration for many artists and writers. Apollo's intelligence, courage, and pride were all part of his complex and multifaceted personality, and they helped to make him one of the most fascinating and enigmatic figures on Mount Olympus. At a gathering of the gods on Mount Olympus, Apollo and Eros found themselves in a heated discussion about the nature of love. Apollo, in his pride, argued that love was a weakness that mortals succumbed to, while Eros argued that it was the most powerful force in the universe. As the conversation went on, Apollo's arrogance got the best of him, and he began to belittle Eros, telling him that his powers were insignificant and that he was no match for the other gods. Eros was deeply offended by Apollo's words and vowed to teach him a lesson he would never forget. As Apollo walked through the forest, his mind preoccupied with thoughts of his own greatness, he failed to notice the mischievous god of love hiding in the trees above him. Eros watched intently, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. And then, in a sudden movement, he pulled back the bowstring and released an arrow of love, aimed straight at Apollo's heart. But Eros was not done yet. As the love arrow found its mark, he also aimed another arrow at a nearby nymph named Daphne. It was an arrow of love, too, and it pierced Daphne's heart just as Apollo turned to look in her direction. In an instant, the two were bound together by an unbreakable bond of love. As the days went by, Apollo and Daphne grew closer and closer, their passion and desire for each other growing stronger with each passing moment. They spent countless hours exploring the forest together, lost in each other's company. Apollo had never felt a love like this before. The moment he laid eyes on Daphne, his heart swelled with an intense and overwhelming desire for her. Every thought and action was consumed by his love for her. He would spend hours on end admiring her beauty, watching her every move and finding ways to be near her. Daphne, too, was captivated by Apollo's love. She found herself drawn to him, entranced by his confidence, intelligence, and charm. Her heart raced every time he was near, and she yearned for his touch. They spent long hours together, exploring the gardens, sharing their hopes and dreams, and losing themselves in the passion of their love. The air was heavy with the scent of blooming flowers, their petals soft and velvety to the touch. The sun shone down on them, warming their skin and filling their hearts with a sense of joy and contentment. The gentle breeze rustled through the leaves, creating a soft melody that echoed the rhythm of their love. As they sat together under the shade of a sprawling oak tree, Apollo took Daphne's hand and gazed into her eyes. The intensity of his love was palpable, and she could feel her heart fluttering in response. He leaned in, his lips soft and warm against hers, and she surrendered to the passion of their embrace. My dearest Daphne, I swear by the light of the sun and the power of the heavens that my love for you will endure for eternity. No force in this world or any other will ever diminish the flame that burns within my heart for you. Apollo, my love. I too swear by the beauty of the earth and the mysteries of the forests that I will cherish you forever. Your love has given me wings to fly, and I will always be by your side no matter what may come. 
they spent hours lost in each other's arms, their bodies entwined in a dance of desire and devotion. Every touch, every kiss, every whisper of affection was a testament to the power of their love. It was as though the world around them had disappeared, leaving only the two of them to revel in the intensity of their passion. However, little did Apollo know that Eros had one more trick up his sleeve. One day, as Daphne and Apollo were sitting under a tree, enjoying each other's company, Eros pulled out his bow once again. This time he aimed an arrow of hate at Daphne's heart, and it struck her with a cruel force that she could not resist. As Apollo and Daphne were professing their love for each other, a third person appeared. It was a handsome and charming god named Zephyrus, the god of the west wind. At first, Apollo and Daphne were not concerned about Zephyrus's presence, as they were confident in their love for each other. However, as Zephyrus began to speak, Daphne's attention gradually shifted from Apollo to the new arrival. Zephyrus was known for his persuasive words and his ability to sway people's hearts. He spoke to Daphne in a soft and gentle voice, telling her that he had been watching her from afar and was enamored by her beauty. Daphne felt flattered by his words and found herself drawn to him. As Daphne's feelings for Zephyrus grew stronger, Apollo became increasingly desperate. He tried to win her back with gifts and affection, but Daphne's heart had already been swayed by Zephyrus's words. She began to distance herself from Apollo and eventually made the difficult decision to leave him. Apollo was devastated by the loss of his love and felt humbled by the power of love and the consequences of his own prideful behavior. He realized that he could not control the hearts of others, and that love was a force beyond his own power. As Apollo chased after Daphne, the forest around them seemed to blur into a green blur. The sound of leaves rustling and twigs snapping filled the air as they darted through the underbrush. Daphne's hair flew wildly behind her, and her dress snagged on branches as she ran, but she did not slow down. Apollo's heart raced as he ran after her, determined to catch her and confess his love. The sun streamed through the trees, casting a warm glow on everything around them. The birds chirped and sang, seemingly unaware of the drama unfolding below. Apollo's breathing grew heavier as he neared Daphne, and he reached out to touch her arm. She turned to look at him, her eyes filled with fear and anger. Apollo could see the pain in her eyes as she tried to pull away from him. As Apollo continued to pursue her, Daphne's fear grew, and she could feel her strength waning. She realized that she could not outrun the god forever, and her only hope was to pray to the river god, Peneus, to save her. With Apollo closing in on her, Daphne cried out to the river god for help. Peneus, father of the river, please save me from Apollo's grasp. I cannot bear to be taken by him. Suddenly, as if in answer to her prayers, Daphne began to feel her feet sink into the ground. Her arms stretched upwards, and she could feel her skin becoming rough and hard. To her horror, she realized that she was turning into a tree. As Apollo finally caught up to her, he could only watch in despair as Daphne's transformation was completed. Where once stood a beautiful nymph now stood a magnificent laurel tree. The leaves rustled in the wind, and Apollo could almost hear the voice of his lost love speaking to him through the rustling leaves. Heartbroken and filled with regret, Apollo embraced the tree and pledged to cherish it forever. From that day on, he always wore a wreath made of laurel leaves as a symbol of his love for Daphne and the lessons he had learned about the power of love and the consequences of his own pride. Apollo stands before the tree where Daphne once stood, reflecting on the lessons he has learned about the power of love and the danger of pride. He now realizes that love is not something to be controlled or manipulated, but a force that should be respected and cherished. As he gazes up at the sky, Apollo catches sight of Eros flying overhead. He understands now that the god of love had orchestrated the events that had led to his heartbreak, and that all of his struggles had been part of the game of love. Bitterly, Apollo acknowledges that love can bring both happiness and pain, and that even the mightiest of gods can be humbled by its power. After Daphne's transformation, Apollo was heartbroken. However, he did not forget his love for her and decided to use the laurel leaves as a symbol of his devotion. Apollo declared that from that day on, the laurel tree would be his sacred tree, and he would use its leaves to crown the winners of his sacred games, including the Pythian Games, the Nemean Games, the Isthmian Games, and the Olympic Games. 
The laurel wreath became a symbol of victory and excellence, and it was awarded to the greatest athletes, poets, and musicians of ancient Greece. The leaves were also used in religious ceremonies to honor Apollo and other gods.